Bitcoin weekly close upon us. We'll talk about key levels to watch. Keep watching. Hey, I'm Josh. Welcome to Block Roots on behalf of my co-founder, Kenner and Clark, who also does videos each and every week. We just want to say welcome to the channel. If you've not yet subscribed, make sure to do so below by clicking the red button. When you do that, it makes us feel good, but also too, you get those notifications in your inbox each and every week when we make a video. We also like to give away $100 of Bitcoin when you leave a comment. And so we'll do that giveaway for anybody who leaves a comment or engages in our video. We like to do that each and every week. So make sure that you comment on our videos. Kenner and Clark also has a green screen now. He's he's getting really serious, really great videos that he's producing. He does like to do a lot of live streams, in-depth analysis. And so I'll tend to cover some fundamentals. I'll tend to cover some overview. And as far as the really in-depth analysis, as far as breaking down the charts, you know, an hour long or so, sometimes more answering questions live, Kenner and Clark will do that. And just know tomorrow on Monday, I'll go ahead and put up his tweet where he said, crypto and coffee live at 10 a.m. Eastern, 1400 UTC on Monday, right after the market open to go ahead and talk about some good stuff for block roots. So go ahead and do that. And as far as that goes, nothing is financial advice. Let's go ahead and jump into the charts. We'll talk about Bitcoin. Uh, let's talk about Ethereum, Link, YFI. And I think we may leave it to that. Uh, and also know too, I've said it before and I'll say it again. If you've not yet um, joined the Femex Traders Arena, the trading competition is going on soon. You've got five days left to register. You can actually join our team Kenner and Clark and I are partners with Femex, so make sure that you are eligible to trade. We always say that. Know your local laws and rules. And if you go ahead and scroll down here, you notice we're about seventh right now. We've got about 28 members on our team. And there's some other people, Moon Boy, Sunny Decree, uh, Chart Champions. So there's quite a few other teams also right now, but feel free to go ahead, click join our team, and uh, you'll join the Femex trading competition where the current total prize is 10 BTC total, okay? So again, make sure to check that out. If you haven't yet, Femex, Femex is a great uh, platform to use. And if you've not yet joined it or tried it out, just check it out. Go to Femex.trade, go ahead, and if you are eligible to trade on Femex, put in some money, uh, try it out, do your thing, right? Always uh, proper risk management. Again, I don't wanna tell you what to do, but I would encourage you to check it out if you do like to trade. Again, a premium product that they provide. So as far as Bitcoin goes, though, we're getting close to the weekly close, right? We're right there. And this is the weekly chart. And notice what I've done is I've, got, I've, got, I've marked the, the next two kind of current levels that we want to watch, right? And so if I were to zoom in here, and you're going to notice that Bitcoin has last week previously has rejected off that level that was the next kind of key level uh, around 11000 $518. That's a key level for the weekly, as well as, of course, the local top. The, the close prior to the breakdown was around 11930 So these are two key levels that we want to continue to watch, right? Long term, this has been really good. Now, we do know that Bitcoin has held this one previous level. I'm going to go ahead and just bring this one line down, right? And so that is at around 10183 10000 Anyway, point being is that this was a level that we wanted to make sure that Bitcoin uh, did not close below, at least on the higher time frames. So far, so good. It's looking like we are continuing to trend up still, but we do want to see if Bitcoin can break above this. We've got a couple of hours left until the close. So if Bitcoin can break up another $100, that would be a good sign of another break in the next level. And of course, a lot of this with horizontal levels too, and this technical analysis, these technicals, I mean... Some of it is, as you would say, self-fulfilling prophecies, right? I mean, a resistance is there because people sell there, right? Everybody gathers and said, this should be a place where we should all sell or where people are going to step in and sell, or this is a place where people are going to likely buy, whether it's a major moving average, whether whether it's a Fibonacci level, whether it's a horizontal uh, level or structure. So again, I think it is good that we break these levels one at a time and slowly kind of grind on up there. Um, and with that said, that's the weekly chart. Now, as far as going back down to smaller time frames or uh, lower time frames, the four hour chart, right? This was a key area that we uh, was previously, of course, the support before we broke down. And that was around 11,200. And notice that, again, Bitcoin continues to stay above it. We've got a few wicks down, 
below it. But of course, after you saw that happen, every time price wicked below it previously, back in August or so, we see we saw Bitcoin move back up. And so again, I don't expect Bitcoin to just to move on up and drop like it did prior to that. I would agree that since this level held, people and buyers did step in and this level is going to be a key to hold continuously. So as long as we stay above 11,200 on lower time frames, um, I think we're good to go with Bitcoin, right? So not a lot going on, a lot of grinding going, so not too much excitement, but that is a key level to watch. And of course, with the other level on the weekly is, uh, is another key price level that we want to pay attention to. Now, when it comes to Ethereum, right, Ethereum has actually done pretty well over the past couple of years. Now, you could argue that Ethereum has outperformed Bitcoin. And why we see that is because during Bitcoin's high, back in June, July, I think June 2019, you know, it hit as high as almost $14,000. Currently, it's around $11,000. But as far as uh, Ethereum goes, that high back was around 360, of course, the closed level on the daily chart. This is the weekly, excuse me was around 309 and now you see uh, Ethereum not only break back above that but look it has held that level that was previously the high back in 2019 during the um, blow off the top for Bitcoin and all the altcoins and then fell back down from there. So uh, with that said, I think Ethereum has done really well. It's actually broken above that level. And if you think about it, it's it's almost equal to Bitcoin breaking above 14,000 and then holding that. So again, compared to that, again, altcoins and Bitcoin, a, a totally different story. But as far as the price goes, it has performed better over the past few months for sure, breaking above that previous high back in uh, June 2019. And again, this is kind of a key area as well, too. You're going to notice that, um, again, this was support, excuse me, resistance turned into support. And then again, resistance again. And, uh, you know, like I said earlier, uh, Ethereum is holding that level around three in the 340 area. So as long as it continues to hold this area in the 340s, I'm feeling good with Ethereum. And of course, if Ethereum continues to perform well, you're going to know that altcoins are going to perform well too. So um, just continue to watch this area. I know I've seen a lot of different price targets for Ethereum being below that. And for me personally, I feel like it's specifically on the weekly chart. If we stay above 340s, then we're golden. We're good to go. And so I do believe that the market will continue to uptrend because we're seeing not only Bitcoin, but Ethereum as well too. And some of these alts hold some of these key levels. Now, we know that a lot of alts did actually retrace and come back down from their highs. For instance, you see Chainlink here, of course, broke down from the high. Of course, it did go over $20. It broke down below around $7.30 or so. And then from there, it's been kind of slowly ranging, making higher lows and higher highs. Now, again, this was a key level to watch, right? This, this uh, let's see here, price 1080 in the 1080s or so. And right now, Chainlink is kind of poking right at that area that was uh, resistance turned, flipped its support, and then again, it's resistance again. So again, I want to see this level. I like to trade horizontals and kind of build upon that. But I do overall believe that Chainlink and a lot of these other altcoins have hit their lows for this um, for the last couple of months for the cycle after the pullback. We did need a we did need a pullback. We did see, of course, Chainlink go from three dollars or so. Well, yeah, this year, even lower than that, right? We were all the way down to, you know, at the low under $2 to go up to 20 to do almost 20x. Yeah, definitely needed a pullback, right? And so alts had a lot of momentum. Chainlink looked really good there. And uh, again, with this pullback, starting to move on back up, lower, I mean, higher lows and higher highs on the trend. And I think if Chainlink can, can perform well, we're going to see a lot of other alts follow. Chainlink tends to be pretty fast. When it comes to balances and when it comes to leading a lot of other assets and so we're going to continue to watch Chainlink as one of those and the other one i'm going to continue to watch especially for the DeFi uh, altcoins um, is urine uh, finance right so with urine finance again it has rejected off the previous level here it did break below it rejected off of it came back down rejected off of it again around uh, fifteen thousand seven hundred. And for me, I mean, I do want to see it break back above this level. Okay, this is the daily chart. But even even above that, right, I want to see it 
come on back above this previous area and so to make another higher high on the trend over 18,000 would really love for it to come back up here and so this current range that price bounced off of several times right before it broke down yeah it was around 19,000 19,100 but for price to eventually break back above and break above 19,000, specifically with a psychological number around 20,000, I think that that would be really good for the asset. And I think that more people would jump in and feel like they were going to get left behind, okay? Because we see that it's it's in the 20,000s now. We know that it got well above 40,000, and so I think a lot of people will probably start to chase that if Yearn Finance does break above 19, 20 thousand dollars, especially on the daily chart. But as long as we hold this level, right? So this 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 key area, this key zone, anywhere below, you know, from 12,400 to 15,000. I mean, if we just range right here, you know, totally fine. I'm not going to really get too bullish, especially on DeFi alts, until Yearn Finance continues to break up. You know, before Yearn Finance could have cured the common cold. I mean, as many people who are super bullish on this overall, now people are questioning the use case of it, which is really remarkable and really funny. I think that we've seen a lot of money go into DeFi, and I think that DeFi has a lot of use case overall. So, you know, people just playing with their emotions. Overall, this is just a market knowing that in the end, the key to any of these for me is stacking more Bitcoin, stacking more USD, and just seeing long-term value in some of these. So, Again, with some of these that I've talked about, you're in finance, YFL, Shroom. I mean, I, I, I do see long term the price trending up. And that's why I hold some of these specifically because I do think they do better in 20, in the late uh, 2020 here and early 2021. So continue to keep an eye on some of these DeFi assets, but definitely watch YFI. If it does trend up, I do believe that a lot of the other DeFi assets will go to follow that. So, you know, with that said, Yearn Finance, want to see it break above 18, 19 thousand dollars ethereum again has looked pretty good it's holding the long-term uh, support uh, line here and so we do see it performing better than the uh, high back in 2019 looking better than bitcoin overall and then bitcoin again just eleven thousand two hundred. we want to hold that if it can hold that i'm feeling good overall i'm not feeling super bearish and right now too um i'm just kind of neutral right i'm just waiting for bitcoin to make the moves happen so Again, uh, playing some small altcoins here, some micro caps, doing some farming as well for me personally. But if you want the in-depth market analysis as far as uh, to have your questions answered, just make sure to check out Karen Clark's stream tomorrow. That's going to be a live stream again at 10 a.m. Eastern time zone, 1400 UTC time. Uh, wherever you're at in the world, just be, um, be there if you can. That's a typically a good time for everybody to be able to make that. So all across the world, regardless of where you're at, whether you're Pacific time zone, Eastern time zone, or if you're Europe and possibly even in Asia, you could probably watch this as well. So again, let's just kind of keep an eye on Bitcoin. It's ranging here, going sideways. You know the key levels to watch. We're feeling pretty good overall as far as here at Block Roots. Uh, and with that said, you guys have a great start to your week. Make sure to check out the live stream tomorrow. Trade effectively, and we'll talk to you soon.